these are my solar controllers. I have I have two Midnight Kid controllers, 30 amps each. That's what they can handle. On the bottom, I have a very inexpensive, no-name uh, controller that feeds the lead-acid batteries. Um, now, both these solar controllers, uh, one, they look a little bit differently, but really they're the, the same. Um, one's an older model. This one's I bought in 2017. This one I bought this year. There is a firmware difference uh, between the two, and that's what I'm going to be doing next, is upgrading the firmware. And to the side, I have uh, breakers. Um, these are the breakers for each solar controller. This is uh, the battery connection. And this goes up to the solar panel. Currently, I have it off because I am just doing a load test on the batteries. Um, that is pretty much it. Uh, I'll be connecting these up after I've uh, upgraded the firmware on the older one. I will be connecting these two together with the uh, correct cable that I'll show you in a, in a minute um, to put these into sync mode. And sync mode allows me to make one of them as a master controller and uh, whatever our settings I set on this for the uh, absorb or float. So I have my solar controller opened up. This is my old one and uh, you can see I have a burnt mark right there. This is where my cable came loose a couple of years ago and arced over and melted the connection. So anyways, uh, be careful whenever you do uh, any of the wiring to these controllers and I use marine grade wiring for one and uh, also watch it doesn't come loose anyways I'm going to be hooking up <coughs> the synchronization cable this is a six conductor RJ12 uh, what we used to call a telephone cable uh, now be careful you if you go to buy one of these do not buy a four position cable. You need the six position cable. Four position are the uh, typical tele old telephone cables, uh, four wire cables. But you need a six position data cable. And it plugs into here. Let me snap it in place. There we go. All right, so six position cable and uh, it will have to be connected up into this other controller. And I'll be doing that after I do my firmware upgrade. So I'm going to put the back cover back on this and uh, continue with the upgrade. Um, I will have to access this little port right here. It's any USB cable. I think it's still in good condition. I hope it is. Or I won't be upgrading. So just to show you, uh, I've downloaded the firmware onto a laptop. Uh, I've got it in its own folder and you can see hopefully you can see it says kid updater and also the firmware 1864.fup and what you have to do is open up the kid updater and run it and now it is started and now I have to go to my controller, power it up. And it comes to power up position. Uh, I'm gonna have to put the camera down to show you this next part. So I've scrolled across to the tech manual and I'm gonna hit that. And then it has uh, different settings, calibration, factory reset. I have to sc scroll down to firmware update. And then I should be able to just hit the enter button and it should start updating. Preparing, please wait. Bootloader 2.5, firmware update. Uh, 
not sure if I have to hit enter again, I think so. Hit enter again. And just wait. Waiting for kid connection, as it says on the PC. And nothing seems to be happening. So I was finally able to update uh, my solar controller to uh, the latest software 1864. Um, I had a number of problems. One, the mini cable connection. I think because my connection uh, has never been used before, uh, perhaps there was some corrosion in there. Plug this in and out a number of times. Uh, that could have been the issue. Um, first time I tried to uh, update the software, update the, the firmware, I should say, uh, I bricked the machine. I bricked uh, the solar controller. So then I had to go through the recovery um, instructions. Um, it failed a number of times and finally I got the right connection. So what you should have been able to do is go to the setup menu to the where you hit menu back scroll across to tech hit enter and then scroll down to whoops firmware update and then you hit enter and that would start the whole process providing you have the software loaded onto your PC first use the extractor um, tool that they give you uh, in the uh, in the file especially if you have uh, uh, Windows 10 um, and just follow their instructions uh, they have the instructions there it was a learning experience and I don't want to try doing it again. Uh, now, since I have this controller out, let me just get back. Uh, I might do some work on updating this connection. I might uh, pull this board out, solder wires right directly to the back and run the leads uh, out of here and then um, disconnect them with MAR connectors. Uh, I'd never liked this connector. I thought it was very flimsy and you could see the damage done when I uh, had a bad connection. Um, anyways, I'll take a second look at this. And uh, now the new ones, they actually, uh, you could see on my new midnight um, they have a box below it and what they've done is run the wires themselves out of that into a larger connection and uh, which is much better so uh, yeah they must have got a lot of complaints about this so I have fixed my midnight solar controller um, it now boots up correctly, correct software, so this is ready to install back into the boat. So here's what I had to do to fix my controller. Um, this is kind of a blessing in disguise. This terminal that had been burned uh, from prior use um, finally gave way, broke away and uh, so I was looking for a way to repair this and I happened to find right in front of the terminal there were two solder pads um, and uh, it allowed me to solder right directly onto that so I put on I doubled up two 16 gauge wires stranded wires um, that was the really the only way I could get onto that and uh, it seemed to work fine. Um, now 16 gauge wires uh, can handle 22 amps each. 
<clears throat> so capacity of 44 amps uh, flowing through this circuit that's the uh, possibility and these wires are short so I don't think there's going to be any issue here uh, the other thing is this controller will be uh, connected to my 660 watt array of solar panels and uh, 660 watts you'll never see that I'm guessing 400 max that you're ever going to see practically and uh, that would mean about oh, roughly 16 amps at the maximum flowing through the, this wire and uh, that is fine so right now it's rated at 44 amps and maximum I think you will ever see on this is about 16 amps anyways uh, I'm going to install this back in the boat and everything should be good so I have both solar controllers uh, working fine now they're both in the sync mode and uh, I had a lot of trouble um, with my older controller um, not just mechanical but trying to upgrade the software um, I did find videos from uh, Midnight Solar that uh, explain things but I wish they would have that all in the manual it would have made it a lot easier um, my final thing I had to do to get everything working correctly because I was getting an error message consistently on the uh, the old midnight solar controller I had to do a factory reset and once I did the factory reset uh, then I was able to uh, get them into sync mode no issue um, right now I've turned them back on with the solar back on. I'm getting the uh, one orange light LED flashing, uh, which is indicating one week. And I think it means that it hasn't uh, had a charge in one week. I think it's just because I've reset things. I'll have to monitor that to make sure that uh, that's not an issue. I don't think it is. Um, Anyways, it looks like everything is working fine now, and uh, I am going to hopefully leave them alone and just monitor how they charge. Uh, oh, one thing I should uh, mention, let me just go to the status. Okay, now, this is from the... Um, this is from the Wizbang Junior shunt um, that monitors all the power going in and out of the battery. It says I have 400 amp hours remaining, uh, which is a fully charged battery, and the state of charge is 100%. This is not correct because when I turned uh, them off last night, I was uh, down 97% uh, or something like that. Uh, anyways, when you power them down and repower them, uh, it just comes back up to go, oh, we're at 100%. No. Um, so what I'll have to do is let this run today until the voltage comes up uh, through the absorbed cycle and actually gets to 100%. Um, if I was camping and say I was at 97% and I wanted to turn them off for the for the night because they will draw power out of the battery uh, maybe one amp hour um, one amp per hour all night long um, and then I turn them on in the in the morning uh, rather than it showing up as 97 percent it would show up as a hundred percent so I'd have to take that into consideration and know uh, exactly where um, the state of charge is Anyways, uh, just a little bit of information on the Midnight Kid. Um, it has, uh, over the my trips that I've taken, it has performed very well. So um, that's why I bought a second Midnight Kid uh, to run in parallel uh, with my first Midnight Kid. So I have my two Midnight Kids all hooked up, running in with the latest uh, firmware on it. 
1864 and uh, I'll just show you how it works so turn the battery breakers on and then the solar panels and they boot up and you can see right now that uh, this the main one is just switched into bulk and 10 seconds later this one switched into bulk and they oop, they immediately go into absorb so yeah they're almost fully charged anyway so anyways they are in uh, absorb mode right now solar panel on the top one is drawing 240 watts solar panel on the bottom array is uh, 160 watts um, not a lot of power today is overcast but uh, anyways uh, I want to show you the setup so if I go to battery absorb I have that set for 28.2 minutes or 28.2 volts for a 15 minute time frame and then if I go back and you back go over to float I have that set for 27.5 volts um, I am going on suggestions I have researched on the web um, for life peel 4 batteries because the uh, the midnight uh, the midnight kid really is set up for um, lead acid batteries they have all the uh, adjustments in there for uh, float and absorb um, etc but you can set your own settings and I don't want uh, these batteries to charge to a hundred percent so I'm picking about 98 um, percent life PO4 batteries and what I'm told is uh, they don't like to be in float stage once they charge that's it um, they don't receive any other charge whereas lead acid batteries need a constant current uh, feeding them in, in, in a float uh, voltage I should say I shouldn't say constant current but they need float to trickle charge uh, the batteries um, what I do is I let them go through a full charge cycle uh, up through absorb and um, if I'm not going to be taking the boat out at all then I just switch the power off and it just stays uh, in the absorb setting at uh, 28.2 uh, if it does go down to float and I shut it off it, it takes only minutes for it to come back up to 28.2 um, the performance curve of life po4 is not linear it's uh, uh, majority of the charge cycle is current only you'll you'll see the voltage fluctuate very little until it gets to about uh, 97 percent charged and then it starts to ramp up um, and you'll see a voltage uh, uh, change um, so when you are calculating full charge versus less than full charge and I'm picking about 98 um, percent don't don't um, don't calculate that via the voltage the maximum voltage like 3.65 volts per cell uh, etc as full versus I think this is about 3.55 or something like that um, you need to really uh, use um, uh, measuring equipment and I'm just uh, I'm just going from uh, online testing that's been done by uh, other other people who have the proper equipment. 